UFC 270 just came to an end, and many called it probably the biggest event of the year, even though 2022 just started. Why so? Well, the reason is the main event, a title unification bout between heavyweight Goliath's Francis Ngannou and his old training buddy, Cyril Gan. This was Ngannou's first defense. As for Cyril Gan, he defeated Derek Lewis by TKO, which got him the interim title. Like, did you see the Derek Lewis Cyril Gon fight? No, no. You need to see that. There's a knockout. That Derek Lewis got a knockout, right? No, Cyril Gon beat the shit out of him. Oh shit! He shut him out. He shut him out. Like it was a shutout. For I think, I think he stopped him in the third. But I mean, Cyril Gon, who's six foot five, two hundred and forty-seven pounds, moves like a hundred and seventy pounder. It's crazy. He's he's bouncing like wonder boy like bouncing like this the entire fight bouncing throwing feints like completely changed the standard of heavyweight striking and i'm not exaggerating i watched it three times i watched it today in fact i watched it in the gym today while i was working out so he's, better than like in god in terms of movement in terms of he's like the, the best moving heavyweight you there's no question he is the best moving heavyweight i've ever seen no question on the eve of this fight, both fighters expressed confidence in their success. The intrigue for the fight was fueled by the fact that not so long ago, a video of Cyril and Francis sparring, in which Cyril outclassed Nganu, was leaked to the net. Nganu later revealed that he in turn knocked out Cyril in one of his workouts, and all this had a noticeable effect on the atmosphere around the fight and caused additional tension. Anyway, according to the bookie's ratings, Gan was a slight favorite for the fight. However, many experts believe that the Frenchman could drag the fight into the late rounds and probably even turn it into a boring chess game. Everyone was hoping for a slugfest, but in fact, the main key to victory were the takedowns. And people on social media started saying that Francis is looking like Habib Nurmagomedov. So what do you think of the fight? Did you expect such a turn of events? Write your opinions down in the comments below. We can all say that that fight was crazy, so let's break it down round by round. It seemed in the first couple of rounds that Nganu's worst fears were coming true. Gan, after an unsuccessful attempt to transfer to the ground at the start of the fight, turned to his favorite tactics. The Frenchman was brilliant at moving, maneuvering, and changing stances. Every now and then Gan threw low kicks or quick jabs and scored points. Nganu, for the most part, relied on explosiveness. The Predator was pressing, but he was moving forward without any punches, and against the background of his fast opponent, he seemed to be too passive. Round 2 was a little less exciting. Tactics, accuracy, and the minimum number of significant strikes were the main key to this round. The audience was already booing, and it wasn't clear who took the round. The third round was much more meaningful, and Ganu put his opponent on the mat twice and accentuated his punches several times and wore Gan down. The reigning champion had a confident and effective third round. At the post-fight press conference, Nganu said, I was uncomfortable, not even stable. I was worried I could not move fully, especially with an opponent who moves so well. It was quite difficult. I saw my opportunity to win in the first two rounds. And we've been working a lot on our wrestling, and the team recommended I keep doing it. Turn the fight into a wrestling match. Impose grappling. We were confident in my skills. I wasn't very stable, so I was very concerned and couldn't move properly. And against a guy who move as well as uh, Syrian, you know, so he was pretty tough for me. Uh, st stand, the stand up part, but um, he kind of like gave me the opportunity. You know, uh, came to me at first with those takedown, and I knew that. That's what he's been working on, and my team uh, 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 recommend me to like keep doing that. You know, work on the uh, uh, grapple wrestling and grapple grappling because we were pretty confident about our uh, skills. Round four. Show me Big Francis' is double leg, man. Right? Go back to that or set up your overhand. I need off your level change. What do you got? Mike Tyson head moving side to side. He coming, keep using that jab, champion. Straight punches up because he'll be there. Let's get low. Let's go some fun, baby. Let's go, baby. Francis spent the first two minutes of the round breathing, frankly, trying to recover from the intense work of the previous round. 
Zero was unable to take advantage of the situation though, and at the end of the second minute, he was back on the ground. And Gunner was able to translate and take control for a long period of time. Even when Gan managed to get up, he was pinned to the cage and instantly transferred back to the mat. The Frenchman lost the fight cleanly. In one of the exchanges, he managed to land a knee to the head of Cyril. But with these warriors still going, everything's going to be decided in the fifth championship round. Round 5 Gan's trainer didn't deceive his fighter by informing him that it was going to be a loss. They needed to gather their strength in reverse course of the fight. Ok, je vais être clair avec toi Cyril, on perd le combat, on perd le combat, on ne peut pas faire le combat contre Cyril, le combat. Cyril, we cannot lose the fight. C'est impossible. It's impossible. Okay. Donc, tu okay. vois, tout le monde écoute, tout le monde locale, on va chercher, on va Everybody perdre. Everybody listen. On perd le combat. On peut we pas are faire going to come back. We cannot lose this fight. It's impossible. It's impossible. In this round wins this fight. Come forward, hand movement, straight punches. Hey, look at me. Take this punk ass down. I believe you, motherfucker. Hey, we've been through so much shit together. This is you. You understand yeah. me? This is you, Five kid. Let's go. Pull it up. I'm in the Cyril went after his opponent like a tank. Several shots to the head put him in a good position. And finally, the challenger managed to take the champion to the floor. This is in real trouble. This is real bad. Yeah, he is. Well, but now God needs to try to use this to sweep. It's still attacking the leg lock. It's past the knee line. Yeah, he doesn't have it. It's okay here. Francis is fine here. But if you're God, you got to try to use this. You got to try to use this to get back on top. Yeah, but Don is adjusting. Oh, now Francis has got his back. And Cyril got his side. He gets his off, no doubt. Yeah, exactly. He's, he has had to grapple more in this fight than he ever has. Mount. Uh-oh. Oh my goodness, Francis is about to mount him and get to the arm triangle position. But unfortunately, he didn't take advantage of it. Moreover, at the end of the second minute, Ngannou managed to move into a dominant position. The last chance Gon had was a heel hook. The challenger spent all his last energy on that action, and he failed. The end was up to Francis, and we were waiting for the judge's decision. It was a unanimous, no question about that. Cyril went all in in the championship round, but he just couldn't defeat Francis Ngannou. Not today, at least. Ngannou gave a real master class. Francis was able to adjust his actions during the fight and once again proved that he is still underestimated. As it turned out, Ngannou can also fight well. In fact, he can do everything in the octagon. Cyril Gan's attempts to run at the five rounds and score points simply by virtue of his speed advantage ran into Ngannou's titanic strength and his will to win. Francis is a well-deserved heavyweight champion and we like to believe that after such a performance, the UFC won't let him go and gives him a decent contract. Well, that's it for our roundup of the heavyweight blockbuster between Francis Ngannou and Cyril Gan. Voice is almost gone. Um, it's always tough to watch a brother compete because I can't go in and actually physically help. So we're just seeing the evolution of heavyweights. I mean, did you see that sweep in the fifth? I mean, damn. I mean, I don't do that one. So you're seeing the evolution of the game. And uh, Francis is, you know, scary man. I think it's gonna happen. I think it's gonna happen. I think the UFC eventually will uh, will do the right thing. I think this is one of the greatest fights um, of, of our generation, and um, and it'd be really sad if it weren't to happen. And I believe that it will. I hope so. I hope so. Um, you know, right now we're just training. We're training and just focusing on the things that we can't control, which is being in the best shape. And, um, and I think just be getting in shape sells the fight even more so. You know, people want to see two titans, you know, and Francis is already a titan and I'm trying to become a titan. You know? I want to be the same size as this guy, if not bigger, when we get out there. So, yeah, I got, I got, uh, got a lot of work to do. Hopefully the fight happens, you know, we just gotta stay focused, stay training, and see what the UFC is going to do on their part. John Jones versus Francis Ngannou. Why'd you have to go there, dude? What? Is that's that gonna like, happen for sure the, the only thing the only thing that i would hope if that ever happens is that we allow in to get the press that he deserves like it to, to, like to pump him up in a way that he deserves to make <laughs> you don't that think fight he gets it 
People are terrified of that man. And they are hardcore fans and hardcore fighters. Like everybody who's in the know and everybody in the heavyweight division. Has but he's not like a other superstar. Other he's not a world. It's too tough to get superstar status. You got to do some well, shit. The thing be a national hero. He'd be a huge. He would be a not huge America. success story. Yeah. Well, first of all, in, in his Congo country, for, sure. for sure. Well, he's still a hero there. No well, matter, he, no for matter. sure he is. But I mean, in this country, he would be a hero of like, like he, the scariest guy in the world was an immigrant that barely spoke English yeah, just a true. little while ago, and now he's murking people, and he's only been fighting for six years, true. and he developed his strength, by the way, in a sand mine when he was a child, Jesus. doing child labor. It's insane. In Africa. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Oh, and he happens to be a really nice guy. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. He's from and, Cameroon, and he's funny. He's like smiley, yeah, funny, he's happy guy. He's great. He hits people and they go into orbit. <laughs> so you, know what, you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? <laughs> I think John beats, still beats him. Dude, what a fight that would be. He does, right? What a fight that would be. Fuck I think John Hagler would be the favorite. Does John beat Stipe? If you had a gun to your head? I think John yes. beats everybody. There, there's not a man on this planet who beats John Jim. Wow. we never seen John where he doesn't have to lose weight. we never seen John where, you know, he's, he's, not, he's not cutting 25 pounds and just fucking think how good he'd be. watching his diet. What if he's eating healthy, like good large portions and just hydrating as much as he wants all day long? Maybe he's 10% better. You know, we don't know. Maybe John Jones is really like the best 240 pound heavyweight in the world. He's just been fighting Does he walk at, at 205. Though? But no, but he could he's get there easily. He's, he's easy. 230. Uh, he's, uh, right. And if he decided that, really? to, look, his he comes from one of the best camps in the world, right? If Javier Vasquez and, and Crazy Bob Cook get together and they, they come together with like a, a, a physical plan, you know, for like a, a Cain Velasquez, right? If they're gonna if they're gonna look at like what's the best weight for a guy like Cain Velasquez, they're they're probably gonna say, you know, you don't have to lose any weight. Like two forty. Two forty is the perfect heavyweight. Like, yeah. yeah. Jackson Winkle, John, they're gonna do the same thing. Hundred percent. They're, they're one of the best camps in the world. John Jones was raised in one of. You look at the success. Just go down the line. From Carlos Condit. Like even Yoel Romero went down to Jackson mm -hmm. Winkle. John. He was training they're, with they're that. John. Gonna, it's gonna be like AKA or like Rufus or like any other top camp. They're gonna go. Where do you think he's going? Think about they go. He, where he are you he's gonna going. be at? He already, he already said he's going. I know, but they're gonna yeah. they're gonna figure out a weight. Weight is the right way. Is it? Are you too big at two thirty? Because you be two twenty. Right. Is two twenty? Are you faster? Like when do you have the most cardio? When? Wh what's the fucking point of sure. diminishing returns? Just, Just like speed. I was saying. I think with like my example with Kane was probably not the best example, but I still to this day think of him as like probably one of the greatest talents the heavyweight division. That's has a ever great known. example. Because he was two forty. But it's a great example in his weight. But I don't think he ever concentrated on it. I think he was I just like that. He just though. went at it. Just just trained real hard and was two forty. But like look at Stipe. Stipe two forty example. Two thirty eight. But, but you know, yeah. and then there's guys like John Jones who don't have to do that. Remember to show your thanks. All you got to do is like and subscribe. It only takes two seconds, and these videos take a lot of time to put together. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching.